Good morning. Out here for going for a little morning walk. Want to do a talk about this issue with Russia right now, being on the doorstep of America uh, down there in uh, Havana, Cuba, and the possibility of missile strikes hitting them into America. That's really crazy to think about. Two days ago, Putin warned the West that he would strategically position weapons in countries bringing the West within its striking range. It did not take the Russian leader too long to act. It is the 7th of June 2024 and the world is staring at what could possibly be another Cuban crisis. You heard that right. Russian warships are all set to dock in Havana. Have a look at what Cuba has told the world. It says a group of Russian ships will be visiting Havana next week. These are not your luxury cruise ships, by the way. These are Russian naval ships. But I have a purpose for all these things I need to say. I have some notes I wrote out for this one. But uh, if you know history, back in 1962, I think it was, there was the Bay of Pigs invasion down in Cuba. And basically Russia was moving weapons and things into Cuba and Kennedy at the time I guess uh, called up Khrushchev I think if I remember correctly and and uh, negotiated peace you know out of the whole thing well <laughs> we don't have the same situation now uh, our president that we currently have the man that's there the figurehead he's not really leading anything and um, he's not going to be calling up uh, Putin or anything else like that and uh, negotiating a peace deal. I highly doubt that. I don't think the guy can, he can barely negotiate his way to the bathroom probably. Um, not really somebody I have a lot of confidence in. So, uh, but you know, it, it worked out last time and this time I don't think it's going to go quite the same way um, because we're in a different situation now than we were back in 1962, obviously. I wasn't alive back in 1962, but for those of you who were, you know that the world is quite different. Um, but the other issue is uh, the Russians in 1962 had decent technology. Now they have uh, a lot better technology in terms of weapons systems. And there's the, they have the hypersonic missiles, which travel very quickly. I was actually watching some things about this yesterday and they said that from Havana um, to Washington DC I think if they would launch one of these missiles and shoot them at you know the White House or whatever else it would take 12 minutes for that missile to go from Cuba to Washington DC well, that's mind-blowing to think about that absolutely crazy 12 minutes I mean, imagine that in a flight. Oh, we can go from D.C. To, to Cuba in 12 minutes. I mean, that's that's moving. I don't even think you could handle that, you know, mentally. The, the G-forces would be so off the charts, it'd probably just turn your brain into mush, you know, going that kind of speed. But obviously a missile can go that speed. So we're dealing with some different technology here. And uh, as Russia moves in their forces um i know for a fact that there are russians also here in america russian soldiers and they could start doing some crazy stuff too in this country um america is is not going to survive this one um, and there's a reason for that um not just the spiritual reason of america turning its back on god removing the bible from the schools back in the 1960s hmm I uh, forget if it was 62 or 63 when the Bible was officially, when they officially came out and said you can't teach the Bible in school anymore. Um, it's now, uh, you know, religious persecution or discrimination if you have the Bible in the school. Yeah, okay. Greatest Bible or the greatest book that ever showed up on the earth. Most printed book ever. And uh, we can't hurt our students. Yeah, how did that work out? Now you have students in there that don't even know if they're a boy or a girl, and some think that they're a dog and whatever else. I mean, it, yeah. Uh, turned, over, turned over to a reprobate mind? I think so. 
But um, so, but I've said this in other studies, and I'll say it one more time. Um, the Federal Reserve scam uh, has an expiration date, as many things do in Satan's system. And you have this whole thing of the Federal Reserve, and we're going to print up money from, uh, first we'll say it's backed up by gold, and then in 1971 we'll come out and we'll say, it. actually we're just taking it off the gold standard, and the, the backing for the dollar is the dollar. And I mean, what could possibly go wrong with that? Well, it's a fiat currency. And anybody that studies history knows that all fiat currencies uh, come to an end. Um, in other words, it's just a, it's a fake rigged system. I mean, imagine, just if you will, that you can print uh, dollars on your computer. And, you know, how many do you need for today? Just print it out. <laughs> you know, and the people, you go to the store and the store will accept your printed out dollars. Would there be a temptation on your part to abuse that? Yeah, you know that there would be. That's not good to get into that. Printed currency always ends in a bad situation. And it's about to end in a very bad situation here in America. Um, we already have hyperinflation. If you want to go back to when they first started to print the dollars, you know, you hear the stories about people in the past. Um, you know, oh, I paid 25 cents uh, for a gallon of gas or something like that. Now it's, you know, what, $3.00? 50 cents, something like that for the cheapest. Uh, might be different in your area. But um, what happened? Well, just the cost of living goes up. And, no, the dollar is losing value. That's why things get more expensive. You have to spend more dollars to get what you didn't have to spend as much for in the past. That's just how it works. And um, so when a dollar gets to the point where it's now almost completely useless, then you only have a few options. And America has three options right now for this dollar situation. And this is very important, so please pay attention to this. Um, option number one is you can default on the dollar. Just come out, be honest, say, hey, we were, it was all a scam. Sorry about that. Shouldn't have done this. Uh, the dollar is now useless. Sorry, that's option number one, defaulting on the dollar. Close the Federal Reserve down. We need to come out with a new system, okay? Um, option number two is to hyperinflate the currency. And I mean true hyperinflation where you're having, you know, stacks of Federal Reserve notes to buy, you know, groceries or something like that. This trail's getting kind of closed in. <laughs> Of course, when it rains like this, everything gets wet and it just kind of sags down more, so. But uh, that's option number two. Option number one, default. Option number two, hyperinflate the currency. But there's a third option, and this is the one I think that they're trying to go with. That third option is that you blame the crash of the dollar on somebody else. In other words, you just tear down the entire country, uh, burn it down, and then we'll build it again. The concept of the phoenix. The phoenix is a bird that... Uh, gets to a certain point and it catches on fire, burns down, and then it creates an egg when it's what's left in, in the occult world, and then the phoenix rises again from the ashes, essentially, okay? Those are the three different options. Now, I believe America has been trying very hard to use Russia as the fall guy, to say, okay, it's not our fault. You know, Russia attacked us and we, we had no choice but to um, default or, you know, not default, but uh, we had no choice to just crash and whatever. Which, what does that mean for us as Americans? That means probably that we're going to have a new government in the future. And uh, that new government might not be uh, so friendly to our uh, freedom of speech, our constitutional rights. And again, understand what constitutional rights are. Constitutional rights are a, it reaffirms our God-given rights. Your, you and I, our, our rights don't come from the Constitution. They're reaffirmed by the Constitution, but our rights come from God. 
unalienable rights. As I've said many times in these videos, it's so important that you understand this. You cannot put liens or laws on our rights that come from God. All you can do is just reaffirm them and say, you know, we, uh, we understand uh, these laws, these rights from God. Um, God created this world and he has certain rules and certain things that he's very firm on and he's not going to allow that to be changed unless you have a nation that rejects God, then God will say, okay, then you do your own thing, which is also a big part of America right now. But these unalienable rights are only there as long as the people are in a, you know, obey God. And that's another reason why we're seeing a lot of our rights being taken away now, or, uh, or rather the threat of them being taken away, I should say. Um, Many of our rights aren't gone yet, but uh, it's getting closer to that. I'm having to cross over here and go back through another way. So just bear with me as I forge my way through the forest here. I'm not walking on trails right now. Walking back here in another part of the property. Uh, top down here I have to get around this but this is a, a very important issue brethren because what's going to happen here is we're going to see some major changes all right um, and you know this another thing that's uh, I thought was very instructive is the fact that um, I saw in a video that this guy, Lindsey Graham, he's a, one of the war hawks, you know, wants war very badly because they make money off of war. Like I wrote, or like I did in my one video, war is a financial transaction. And he came out here recently and he said about how that we cannot let Russia take Ukraine because then they'll have control of the, of the uh, mining over there. There's rare earth metals, 10 to, 12, 10 to 12 trillion dollars worth of rare earth metals, and we cannot let Russia get control of that. That'd be terrible. They're sitting on 10 to 12 trillion dollars of critical minerals in, in Ukraine. They could be the richest country in all of Europe. I don't want to give that money and those assets to Putin to share with China. If we help Ukraine now, they can become the best business partner we ever dreamed of. That 10 to 12 trillion dollars of critical mineral assets could be yeah. used by Ukraine and the West, not given to Putin and China. This is a very big deal how Ukraine ends. Mm -hmm. Let's help them win a war we can't afford to lose. Let's find a solution to this war. But they're sitting on a gold mine to give Putin 10 or 12 trillion dollars of critical minerals that yep. he will share with uh, China is ridiculous. <sighs> so, uh, what's it about? What's war about? It's about money, brethren. Uh, what I've been saying for a long time, and if you have any sense at all, you, you don't need me to tell you that, uh, war is about money. Um, another big thing which has happened, the uh, OPEC agreement to basically deal in dollars. Well, if you're going to buy oil, then it has to be in American dollars, denominated in American currency or whatever else they say. Uh, that's another big thing. Recent development here that uh, they did a 50-year deal and they signed it uh, June the 9th, I think it was, uh, 50 years ago, back in, what, 1974. Uh, almost a year before I was born that they did that deal and uh, it just went away June the 9th 2024 hmm so that's another big one what's going to happen as a result of that now the uh, different oil producing countries they no longer have to deal in US dollars um, is that going to make a problem for the dollar? Quite possibly. You have to weave your way back through here. When you're not walking on a trail, you're 
Just kind of bushwhacking back through here right now. You can discover interesting things when you do this. Well, there's a big spider web. I don't think I'm going to go that way. That's not the kind of uh, web that I want to get on. <laughs> That's a funny joke there. <laughs> but uh, getting back to what I'm saying here, another one, another big thing that's happening right now, if you aren't aware of this, today is the 12th of June, and today is another um, meeting. They met yesterday and then today, the Federal Reserve, to talk about what they're going to do, how do they go forward. And uh, they're going to say if they're going to pause on the interest rate thing or if they'll raise the interest rates. And let me explain that, okay? If you don't understand some of this stuff, I certainly didn't for most of my life, but I've been studying it a lot because I think it's important. And um, basically how it works is if they raise interest rates, then that will help to try to keep inflation down. They're tightening money lending. Uh, because if you don't realize this, this is another scary thing that uh, most Americans, their lives are financed. They, everything is uh, debt-based. The spider web's off the camera. And, um, you know, 70% of gross domestic product is consumer debt. A nation of debtors is a nation of slaves. That's what we have here in America. Not good. Oh no, Brother Brian, we have a a nation that's mightily blessed by God. God who? Mammon? Is that your God? The God of debt and finance and whatever else? Not my God. But um, people have everything financed. They buy their homes with finance. They are debt from the bank. They buy vehicles with debt. They buy food with debt. They buy clothing with debt. They buy everything with debt. That system is not sustainable. So basically, the Federal Reserve, like I said, the Fed can raise interest rates, and uh, which tightens the lending, and that way people aren't going out and spending the currency and everything as much and whatever. And so it kind of keeps the inflation thing down. And if they lower interest rates, you know, there's all these people saying about rate cuts. We need rate cuts so we can borrow more money. You know, we can finance our, our lives with more debt. Please lower interest rates. That's a really bad idea. Because if they lower interest rates, then inflation goes up and everything becomes a lot more expensive. See, again, you know, this is why it's so important to understand what money is. Because you have uh, very few people understand that and I will tell you right now very few churches will ever preach on this issue because the churches are financed through debt uh, I mean I've been to so many different church buildings and you, you know you hear the woes about oh how do we pay off this mortgage and we have to, we're getting into more debt and you know the giving's down and what are we going to do and you know to maintain our tax exempt status we have to do this and we have to do that <laughs> I mean it's insanity this world's an insane place though, isn't it? But if, in, if they lower interest rates, inflation will go up. The cost of everything becomes more expensive. If they raise interest rates, inflation will stay down as much as possible. But then you destroy the economy because the economy is based on debt. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? So the three options, default, hyperinflate, or blame somebody else. Um, they're trying desperately to get Russia to attack. And Russia, you know, I don't blame them. I understand what's going on. You know, America is meddling in other people's matters, and we're not supposed to do that according to the Constitution. We're not supposed to be tangled in foreign affairs. So, you know, what is Russia, what is Russia supposed to do? You know, just let America come over there and build, you know, military bases in Ukraine? I mean, what is the... The number, I think it's something like 900 something military bases that America has right now. That's insanity. That's a lot of scheming. Um, shouldn't be that way. America should not have 900 military bases. 
Now we're back out to the trail. So I can head back up. But uh, <clears throat> what is a child of God supposed to think of all this? Look at the economy that's crashing. The cost of everything is going absolutely bonkers. You know, you go up to the grocery store checkout thing and, you know, you have just normal stuff, not buying lobster and, you know, expensive foods or something. And you just have regular food. You go up and that'll be $150 and some odd cents. Yeah. What? $150? You know, you're thinking, are you sure? You know, and, and uh, you know, you have to kind of start restricting the diet a little bit. And, oh, I'd like to get some of that, but I just don't have the money right now. And, you know, and everything. You know, can we go on vacation this year? Well, I don't know. It's getting kind of expensive. What about this? What about that? You know, I really would like to get a new whatever vehicle starting to get kind of old um some of you you have, have expressed about wanting to get out of the city move out to the countryside but you look and you see the price of everything is so high and you think how can i get out of here <clears throat> so yes it does affect us we don't just live in this little you know bubble world of everything's happy you know and nice and wonderful you know you look and you think Okay, Lord, I don't know what to do here. Um, you know, we all go through it. And uh, we can pray for each other. And we can certainly pray to God and ask for his advice. But the big important thing here, the whole point of my little walk and talk rant here this morning, is you have to understand how the devil and his servants work in this world. Um... You have to understand that they control through fear. And the way that you combat that is not to ignore what they're doing and say, well, I just don't want to hear about it. You know, ignorance is bliss. I just want to be happy and don't tell me about these things. I want to just hear positive things. Uh, that leads you into a, a vulnerable position where you can be controlled when they bring out certain tactics of fear. They bring out warfare. You know, uh, I mean, what's it going to be like if Russia hits America with some of these high-speed hypersonic missiles? And all of a sudden, we have not just thousands dead, but millions dead. And, you know, oh, I don't believe in that, Brother Brian. God will protect us. Why would God protect a nation that has done all the evil that America has done? We are ripe for judgment. I'll tell you that. Um, but what the point is here, you have to... You have to uh, Look at truth, but look at it through the filter of Scripture. And look and say, okay, are these things prophesied? Is this stuff supposed to happen? Get off of the microphone. <laughs> um, now I got a deer fly flying around the camera. Sorry if you hear the buzzing noise. Um, but is this, are these things supposed to happen according to the Scriptures? You say, yeah, I think that they are. Okay, then what, how do we react to it? The Bible says that God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. We're supposed to have a sound mind. We're not supposed to be fearful or afraid. Bugging me here. Um, <clears throat> again, power, love, and a sound mind is what we're supposed to have from the Holy Spirit of God. And if you don't have that, well, then you're starting to get a little bit fleshly. And so we need to be informed of these things and say, okay, uh, one of my jobs as a preacher is I have to look at things that are going on in the world and I have to try to make those understandable to the body of Christ. What can you do? What should you do about these different issues? Um, you know, the, there's men out there that call themselves pastors and they're just nothing more than a hireling. They're out there to try to make a social club where they can grow it to the point where they're making a really good living. And uh, they don't say things that upset the flock. And, uh, you know, and I'm not just talking about modern professing Christians. I'm talking about, you know, men that should know better. King James only, militant, hardcore, Bible-believing type of guys. They should know better. And yet, 
Um, they go along with things that make for just sort of wishy-washy, lukewarm people. And again, understand Revelation chapter 3, lukewarm people make God sick. So you don't want to be lukewarm. You don't want to live in a way that would make God sick, that God would be ashamed of you. So um, make sure I got all my notes covered here. Oh, I know. Okay, one more point I saw there to make. Uh, these trying times and everything, there's another purpose for them. And that is the separation of the wheat from the tares. And you have that, you know, in um, the book of Matthew, I believe it's talking about um, specifically the separation of the wheat and tares, the passage there. It's talking about uh, the time of Jacob's trouble going into the um, millennial kingdom. That's when the real separation is going to happen. Matthew chapter 25, Jesus comes down, judges the nations, and then you have that separation. Okay, but um, there are things that are written through the scriptures that you can apply to today for instruction and in righteousness, for reproof, for correction. You know, and doctrinally might not be pointed at you, but you can still say, okay, I understand this for uh, reproof and correction. And so I can look and I can say, uh, will these events that are coming, will they separate people? Uh, the real from the false? Yes, they will. Um, if they come out and they, there's new rules and new things and whatever else that would be bad for Christians, um, it's going to separate a lot of people. You're going to see, uh, you know, let's just say that some country takes over America and they say, yeah, the uh, First Amendment, no, there's no such thing as freedom of speech, freedom of religion. You will now be part of whatever church or something. And we're going to be shutting you down if you're uh, not telling the truth. Or, not, no, I shouldn't say not telling the truth, but if you're not telling the party line, so to speak, then we're going to shut you down. Well, if that happens, you're going to see a lot of people that were professing to be Christians, and they're going to disappear very quickly. And um, let's just be real about that. You know that that's going to happen. So, uh, again, I've been talking about this for a while. If you've been watching the videos, you know I've been warning about the thing of a pretext for war. This is how they do it. Uh, Pearl Harbor, the Gulf of Tonkin, 9-11, they do all these different things um, as a way to say we have no choice, we have to go to war, um, and I think that we're heading for one of those events. Uh, it might have already happened, the way things are accelerating. Well, the bugs love my camera here, I guess. <laughs> um, but it's, it's getting close right now, and um, I find it interesting as well that up until now, there really hasn't been a lot of coverage in mainstream media about the um, Russian Navy down there in Cuba. Hmm, why wouldn't they want to talk about it? Maybe because they want it to be a shock and surprise type of a thing where they can just pretend oh, we didn't know about it. We didn't, we couldn't stop it because we didn't know, you know. And uh, so get ready. Uh, again, the issue of being a prepper. How do you be a Christian prepper? Well, I think I'm fine with people preparing on some level, but how do you prepare and with for all the different stuff that could happen? There is no way to really be prepared completely and 100%, you know, to have enough storage food and enough water, clean water, sources of water, uh, water, if you want to say it that way. Uh, I know I have a weird accent. I get it. But um, ammunition, guns, you know, uh, tent, outdoor tent, sleeping bag, you know, all the different stuff that you should have as a good prepper. Um, how do you prepare for all of that? Uh, what if there's a nuclear biological threat? Do you have the proper uh, things for that? The gas masks and the guy, little Geiger counter and the... You can't be prepared for everything. You just can't. Even if you have all that stuff then you're just going to be a nervous wreck. You don't won't want to go anywhere or experience anything in life. And so, uh, 
you know, I'm not saying don't prepare at all, but at the same time, I'm saying, you know, you really need to have the ultimate preparation for bad times, and that's Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, which brings me to my final point. Remember what this thing is really about. Um, remember that the Lord has to judge America because of what America has done. And um, you look at all the evil that we've put out through Hollywood. You look at the evil that uh, our military has done down through the years. And, uh, you know, the drug trafficking, the, you know, all the different stuff that we've been involved with here in this country. Um, God's going to put an end to that. The Lord has to finally say, okay, it's time for this to end. All the abortion and, you know, all the other stuff and the, the uh, perversion that is being pushed right now on the rest of the world through America, you know, and you're supposed to be concerned about people using uh, different pronouns and whatever else. It's just ridiculous. All the new versions that came out of this country based on the Masonic forgery of Sinaiticus that came in the 19th century. I mean, there's just so much that America has been involved in. So many evil things. And God's soul will be avenged on a wicked nation. And that's where we're heading. And the best thing that you can do is have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the whole point of this ministry, to point people to Jesus, to point people to the Word of God, the King James Bible. And uh, that's where your hope's at. Um, how do I prepare for possible uh, imprisonment or execution or something, if that would ever happen? How do I prepare for it? Trust in the Lord. Um, put my faith in Jesus Christ. Can't think about stuff like that. You just say, okay, well, today's another day. Beautiful day. Some of the flowers are coming up here and wild flowers and hear the birds singing and thank God for another day. But uh, when things start to go down, understand that it's the Lord's doing. And if it's the Lord's doing, then it, he can protect you. Okay, so that will be it. I'm going to get going here to the office, I guess. And uh, <laughs> before the bugs eat me alive. So thank you to everybody out there for your views, for your prayers, for your support. And uh, we'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.